will go to the World Cup. The fourth team are in a playoff with Argentina. An Argentina team who, by the way, were beaten 4 0 by Chile here in the Copa America. There's Jill Ellis, who's already won the World Cup once. Can she do it again? You can see her shaking her head because it's Mercal Zerboni who's down on the field. And badly injured by the look of it, the way she's just lying there. That's very, very early in the proceedings. Hmm. To tell from that. But... Something went, didn't it? Yeah. Something went for... Uh, a young lady who was the oldest deputant ever for the US women's national team at the age of 30. She's been a star around the league for a long time before getting her chance. And this, this, is, uh, this is not good to see from a call Zerboni. Plays for North Carolina cap Courage. It's only her seventh cap as well tonight. Not exactly sure what has happened here. No clues there, just, really. I still can't tell. It looks like she caught her left arm. You see her grab her left arm, maybe that wrist. That's what they're checking right now when she went to ground. Yeah. It looks like it either hyperextended or bent back. And her elbow, by the look of it, as well. You can see the uh, the medical oh. team there just uh, feeling there to see if there's any long-lasting damage. A worried-looking Jill Ellis very early in the uh, proceedings as well. Morgan Bryan is warming up on the sideline. But gosh, and for North Carolina Courage, you know, she's such a cog in the midfield. Yeah, they're the team top of the National Women's Soccer League. They've been dominating it as well, and she plays a very big part in the, the midfield. And she's feeling it looks like the shoulder as well. Very, very unfortunate that it, it didn't look anything, but of course we're not the people feeling the pain. She's being assessed. At the moment, the U.S. are playing with 10 women out there. As it's played towards Alex Morgan. One thing Chile will want to do is defend better when the ball is in the air because they were beaten time and time again from corners the other night. And uh, it's a major problem. I imagine they've been working pretty hard on that in training in the last two or three days. Set pieces defensively were not their strongest point, that's for sure. And you can see the U.S. tactic early on here is they're going to press. And they're going to win it. Hopefully they want to win it that attacking third. Here's Lopez playing inside to Araya. They like to pass the ball around. They're quite good technically. Chile. And a miscontrol by Aedo has given the U.S. possession. It was a pretty good move up till then. That's Kelly O'Hara. It's good to see her back. She's had a... Long time out of the U.S. team, six months, in fact, with a complicated hamstring injury. Goalless early on here. Welcome, viewers, to uh, ESPN2. Joining us here, you haven't missed too much at the start of the game, bar a nasty-looking injury to McCall Zaboni. She's being assessed at the moment as... The U.S. playing in all blue tonight, attacking the uh, goal to your right as you look at it here on a balmy night in San Jose, California, right by the airport. In fact, we can see that the jets landing as we're commentating. They're going to make a change there, and McCall Zaboni has to come off, and Morgan Bryan coming on. This is the injury. It didn't look much, but just an unhappy landing. Yeah, you can see when her left arm hits the ground. And that's what she was grabbing, whether it's her elbow or her shoulder. Let's hope she's okay. And you saw the look of concern on Jill Ellis' face. This is a coach that's just finally getting players back to health and to form. We need to get you back to health as well with that, <laughs> with that throat. Big fight today for, for Julie to be here in the booth tonight. I've drank more lemon tea and honey today than I think in my entire life ah, and this is all that I'm at it's better than in the coffee shop at lunchtime I can yeah, tell you that true. <laughs> that's uh, Leighton making a mistake Chile wearing a change outfit tonight of all white and poor old McCall Zaboni big chance for her here 
starting the game as well, chance to make a statement. And uh, it ends in, well, a matter of moments. It's Tiana Davidson who got her first goal for the US the other night, the 19-year-old Stanford student who's got all her college teammates watching her here. I know, I heard the Cardinals in the house. You gotta yeah. find them in the stands. Formerly of Stanford yourself, of course. In case anybody didn't know Just by now. Just in case, <laughs> yeah. I'll remind you. We've got some big games coming up. They'll probably need her at the weekend, two massive games coming up uh, for Stanford. Notre Dame and UNC this weekend. That yeah. is a big weekend. Yeah. That's Toby in the Heath. A lot of people think she is the most skillful player in the whole of the US setup. A dazzling winger with a real box of tricks. It will be very important at the World Cup. This is Davidson who likes to pick a pass. This time it's cut out though by the midfield player Aedo. Controversial game the other night. The US scored three goals, but they had a couple disallowed. Another one, Carly Lloyd shot, which looked to bounce down across the line. It wasn't the uh, the referee's happiest evening. We've got the experienced Christina Uncle in charge tonight, who's a litigation attorney when she's not refereeing. Here's uh, Casey Short joining the attack, and she's under the microscope a bit about whether she can add things going forward and that wasn't the greatest start no and that's that's one of the things you know you get from Casey Short in terms of you get a great defensive outside back and I think one of the things that Jill Ellis is going to be looking for is you know what can she provide in that final third on the attacking front I should tell you that Megan Rapino is injured at the moment but will be joining us at half time and uh, for a bit of the second half as well She's doing a great job uh, raising money for victims of the fires which have been raging north of here in California. You'll have heard all about that. Here's Alex Morgan with the ball in and a wonderful chance. Not taken. Mallory Pugh attacking it. She was odds on to score, really. She did well to get to that near post as well. Look at Pugh. She's just fighting to get to that near post. She gets inside the defender as well. Her positioning was perfect. And that's a great ball in by Alex Morgan, driven with pace. Defender can't get to it. Look at that, 17 goals in the last 19 games. None in eight before that run. It's the way it goes for strikers. Just hope that you're on uh, one of those flood periods when a big tournament comes around. Just wanting a bit too much time on the ball. Chile has a massive learning experience. For them they've qualified for the world cup for the very first time and they're just uh, dipping their toe in the rather hot water against an elite team see how they get on these two games they'll want to do better tonight than they did last friday that's for certain got a bit of a chasing in all honesty yeah. and that's why i think you're going to see that condensed midfield from chile tonight because there was so much space for Rose Lavelle to create for Lindsay Horan before. Jose Latelia, the uh, former Colo Colo player, who is the uh, coach of this team, has already done a fantastic job. Here's Rose Lavelle, who can uh, suddenly pick a pass, not quite picking up Mallory Pugh, Pugh there. Continental tyre, analyst corner, features the number of players in training camp for the U.S. Since in recent 2017. times. Yeah, look and at that, that gives you an indication, of, you know, that this is what Jill Ellis talked about last year. Was it was experimental phase? They wanted to look at players, and she did just that. But now they're into the phase of, of course, with the qualifiers a month away of hammering down this lineup. Yep. I know to lay it inside. Then Araya. A so neat piece of play by Ado, who just struggled to pick up the pace of the game. She's an important player, wears the number 10 shirt, which is always a little bit iconic in South American circles, if not uh, more globally as well. 
Davidson very comfortable on the ball. She used to be a midfield player, playing it forward to Morgan Bryan. Another player who's had to come through a long-term injury in recent times. Quite interesting, Araya looks to be playing almost as a false number nine at times, and they're using Santi Banyes, the tall striker, out wide on the right. Slight change of formation. They have to tweak things a little bit, that's uh, for certain. Here is Araya. Good early look to what Rose Lavelle brings. Just earlier, she's in the scene between Chile's midfield and defense, picking up a ball. There, she's getting one a little wider. Is O'Hara over 100 caps for her. Lavelle doesn't quite win that one. It's well played by Francisca Lara. Seeing a bit more of the ball already, Chile, than we saw the other night. Just couldn't get out the other night. They kept giving it away, or, or they were very well pressed out of possession by this US side, who are favourites to retain their crown next summer in France. So the hosts will be dangerous Australia to and a few others. Maybe even some we don't know about yet. Just a look at the uh, Chile lineup tonight with uh, Rocio Soto coming into the side and Claudia Soto as well. Those two are not sisters. And when you look at that entire roster for Chile, you've got 13 that are playing either in Europe and you've got one in Brazil, one in Japan. Is Heath with the cross? It's Rocio Soto who cuts it out for a corner kick. And this is a big test here for Chile because the US had 17 corners, 17 on Friday night, and they looked a threat with every single yeah. one of them. It's just a check there on how it was on Friday. That was then. This is now. Let's see whether Chile defend better. They're going to need to do it at the World Cup. The US. Kelly O'Hara with the header down. Only ever scored two goals in 107 caps. Kelly O'Hara. And there she is heading that ball on again. I think she's only going to play a half, isn't she, tonight, Julie? Because she's not yeah, ready she's for 90 not, minutes. Yeah, she's not fully fit for 90. I just think they're excited that they get those players back. Rose Lavelle, Kelly O'Hara. Tobin Heath on the other side, Morgan Bryan, as you mentioned. The phrase that uh, Jill Ellis used for us yesterday was, it's uber competitive. <laughs> Hard to get into this team, and it's all good news for the coach, really. She's got an embarrassment of riches, really. The one player you'd worry about a li little bit, picked up an injury, more, uh, would be uh, Alex Morgan. If she was injured, where's the cover there? Here's Lavelle, one of the exciting youngsters who's come through. Tobin Heath, always got the good close control, the finish not quite so impressive. Tobin Heath might have heard you saying, raising her hand, I'm the one that would cover for Alex. <laughs> would she? I think she'd be the first one you'd look to, or, you know, uh, ironically, the player that is out tonight, Megan Rapino with the rib injury. Oh, Claudia Soto has played straight into trouble there, and Pugh's got a chance as a result of that. And that was almost a little bit of suicide. And this is where the U.S. thinks they can be dangerous. They recognize Chile likes to play these little short balls. We're going to press them. And we're going to pick up these balls and then try and punish them for that. Chile cannot afford to give up those mistakes because the U.S. will punish them for that. All credit to Chile for, for trying it, but uh, it's a dangerous game. You're seeing it, it's all over the world now, the, the high press, people trying to, goalkeepers having to play out from the back. Lavelle picking that ball towards Casey Short, has got a bit too much juice on it, and there's an offside flag up anyway. Big game coming up for you on ESPN, that's next Tuesday. At uh, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 Pacific, as the U.S. renew their storied rivalry with Mexico at the Nissan Stadium in Nashville. Big game. Both teams, of course, rebuilding. The U.S. with a fantastic autumn schedule of games coming up. They 
include games against Italy and England at Wembley on November the 15th, which you'll catch with us on ESPN. They're playing Brazil as well at the end of this Brazil week. Brazil as well, right? Yeah. The seventh. Talk about being thrown at the deep end. <laughs> and Stahl Kemper getting it back, one of the players who's into the side tonight. She wasn't used uh, last Friday. That's when you realize you can swim, Ian. It's good to get thrown into the deep end. <laughs> Remember against France before the World Cup? Well. Those young boys, look at them. They did great. And most of those will be on duty again. The squad's been announced for that match here. And the result looks pretty handy now. Friendly it might have been. 1-1 draw with the eventual world champions. That's uh, Lara and Pew. And Lara going down. And a free kick. Goal-scoring midfield player, Francisca Lara. Scored in three of the last four games. Plays for Sevilla in Spain. And nine of the 11 starters tonight for Chile do play in Spanish League women's football. It's an awfully high line by the United States. Mm, very high. Ashlyn Harris has a ton of space in behind her to cover. Is it too much as Claudia Soto curls that in? It isn't the greatest ball. Didn't really exploit that space that was there for her forwards to maybe run on into. Guerrero to help it back to Yesenia Lopez. Not a good ball. Didn't really afford to squander possession, but it's been one back high by Chile. So far, I'd have to say this is an improved display by them. Saez. Carla Guerrero. It's a long ball in behind there, and the U.S. just caught out for a moment, but the flag is up. But promising that with Leighton making the surprising move from the left back position. She's been hovering on that front line. Look at her. She was already already up there. That was close. She is leaning a little bit off. Looking at times like a 3-5-2, this by Chile. Certainly pushing on the uh, the fullbacks. Gabardo crashing into the uh, advertising hoardings over there. Alex Morgan with a who me look towards the <laughs> referee. We showed that stat of how many players. Jill Ellis has cycled through in the last two years, but think about all the formations as well as she's looked at. She went from a three back to a four back to four in the midfield to two up front. Yeah. I, I think this is the formation that suits them the best here for 3-3. Three, three. And a large part of that is the work you see from those front three. Alex Morgan, Tobin Heath, and Mallory Pugh today, but look at them on both sides of the ball. They put in some shifts. US who've beaten Mexico, they play in the qualifier twice already this year. Never lost to Trinidad and Tobago, never lost to Panama. It would be a uh, sensation about 10 on the Richter scale if the US didn't make it to the World Cup. Morgan Bryan played it blind, there was nobody there, just the grass, easily picked up by Araya. And she finds that. Uh, Yanara Ayedo, who plays for Valencia in Spain. Had a spell at Washington Spirit. Yeah, she played on the reserve team and then actually brought up to their senior team, but didn't get any time. Scored three goals in the Copa America. Chile surprising a few people, making the final, beating Argentina 4-0. Their only defeat was against Brazil, and they weren't humiliated there either. It was only 3-1. The thing that you love to hear about is Chile was the host of that. And talking to the team yesterday, they said that the country just went crazy for it. Yeah. They had a big TV rating the other night, by the way, on Friday yeah. when they played the U.S. Um, at, and I think it was 2 o'clock in the morning local time by the time it finished. It was a late game, even for us. It, um... Lavelle plays it wide. Here's Mallory Pugh. It's a disappointing cross, really. 
straight to the well-regarded goalkeeper, Cristiane Endla, the captain of Chile, and Paris Saint-Germain she plays for. Yeah, that, they, was the, that was the yeah. final round results. They played a few games before that in the competition. And Argentina now goes to the playoff of the fourth place team from CONCACAF they'll play. Mm. But the thing that always strikes me is when they were saying, you love to hear it, you know, with such pride that the people were camping out for tickets and Chile went, you know, of course, with their men's team not qualified for the World Cup, went crazy for it. But then I'm always surprised that people are surprised because this is always the case with women's soccer, right? <laughs> when are we going to stop being surprised by that? Yeah, maybe. Right? Their world rankings 39 at the moment. Well, they've made the, 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 the top 32 already. Scotland qualified today as well, didn't they? They did. But, uh, not been doing too much in the men's game, so that will be a cause of celebration north of the border, back home where I come from. And there's a player on Scotland that the world should see, Kim Little. That's going to be fun for them to get a, a glimpse of her. World Cup in France next summer Morgan dispossessed picked up by Lopez who's quite neat on the ball left foot relaxed to pick a pass but not quite accurate enough for Santi Bagnez on that occasion it's Tiana Davidson the US not having things quite so much there own way tonight but that probably will be good because what do you learn really beating up on teams all the time good move here though Pew breaking in and very good piece of defending but then given away by Saez after the great cut out Labelle goes down in the penalty area no problem with that inside by late on looks like Chile have had a good think and uh, the coach has just redesigned the formation and uh, you can see the difference can't you yeah there's not as much space in midfield that was a, a Rose Lavelle getting in the seam there but you haven't seen that as much as you did in the first half of Friday night for sure Morgan Bryan on the ball Morgan Casey Short coming around at left back it seems at the moment as if Crystal Dunn is in pole position to fill that role at the World Cup itself again Morgan trying to get the cross away and here is that look with Rose there's that seam she finds so well and what she does is she runs at that back line so she pulls a defender to her which opens up Valerie Pugh a little bit Attacking midfielders that run at that back line because then it's got to shift the defense a bit. So important to see that. Decent support over the head of O'Hara. Nearly dropped to Tiana Davidson. Dahl Kemper overhit on that occasion, quite badly overhit as it turned out for the US, who would have thought, I think, given their domination of the game the other night. That they would have won by more than three goals to, I think, but for one or two controversial uh, <laughs> refereeing the decisions, they would have done. Three goals disallowed. <laughs> two, I guess. One that probably. Which raises the question have. we still don't know whether there's going to be the video assistant referee at the Women's yeah. World Cup. There surely must be. It was a largely voted a hit at the Men's World Cup last year, but. Uh, the point they're making is that there's not enough officials around who are experienced enough at operating it. Are you buying that, Ian? Not really, because they no, could use the guy. You. They could use the guys who exactly. operated it last. You have root pulls that we've been watching on TV for the last month. Use those guys, that's and that's the argument that FIFA says. Oh, it takes two years to train them. Come on. Well, Sires might get booked for that because she cynically just pulled her opponent down there, having realised she lost possession. I think uh, Christina Onkel, the referee, well, she's, she's, she's let that go. I think she's only let that go because it's a friendly. That's a booking all day, every day in a competitive tournament, or should be. The referee's married to another referee, the respected MLS referee, Ted Onkel. Do you think they discussed the offside <laughs> law over breakfast? Over tea. 
Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> or maybe VAR, yeah. <laughs> His left out. Juliet's here. Lavelle again. The last ball hasn't been of the quality that Jill Ellis, the coach, would have liked so far. She was talking to you and I yesterday about that. That's an area we need to improve. And that last ball is the decisive one, isn't it, every time? Yeah. And it's been the area that's the last final piece of the puzzle for him. And tonight, especially, it hasn't been there. It's mm. you know, a little bit too much pace on every ball. And I was trying to figure out if this field is shorter, a little faster mm. than normal, because it just seems everything's a little too fast. I think I detected a little shake of the head there from, <laughs> from Jill Ellis, because the US's passing's been a bit on the sloppy side yeah. so far. No breakthrough yet, and 26 minutes gone. There will be chances for others later with uh, the usual bunch of substitutions you always get in these uh, matches. It's Casey Short, Megan inside to Morgan Bryan, wanting to restate her case. Again, the pass not quite right for Tobin Heath. Casey Short to take the throw. She's had cruciate injuries to both knees in her career. So uh, it's great she's come through all that. She is very, very quick. Great recovery speed in her defensive work. Makes a bit of character that. Yeah, such a wonderful story too. For people out there, we know how many have suffered knee injuries. To have two, she says, you know, I just wanted to put the, the crest where the crest I just kept fighting yeah well we were discussing that the other the other night how because of the physiological differences there are more cruciate injuries in the women's game yeah. I'll be honest I didn't know about that till about two yeah. weeks ago it's very prevalent sadly. Yeah. here's Pew it's for Washington spirit Talented individual with 11 goals for the USA as a teenager. Not many have done that. Kelly O'Hara into Rose Lavelle. Lavelle's job tonight is to play the role as the number 10, getting between the midfield players and the defence, finding little spaces and then picking passes to pick the locks, as it were, of the uh, Chilean defence. She hasn't really been able to do it yet. Foul. Chile's definitely got a little more bite in them defensively tonight. Whether they can maintain that intensity, of course, over 90 minutes. I'll be honest, I thought they'd still have all the chasing they did the other night in their legs for yeah. this game. Tell you what, too, this is a team that's having fun over here in the United States. They were at the beach in L.A. Mm. They had their boombox going at practice yesterday. They're laughing. I loved it. Yeah. I think Crystal Dunn is going to come on to replace Kelly O'Hara pretty soon. So I think they're taking it very easy, I think, with Kelly O'Hara. She's been out a long time. So bit by bit, they will build her back up again. I think she, the phrase she used was incremental loading. <laughs> She There's said, a new one on me, but I know what she meant. I said, that means you just need to be smarter. She said, yes. She said, this whole thing happened because I kept feeling it, feeling it, thinking, oh, it'll, get, it'll get better, it'll get better. And then mm. she said, then one day my hamstring was like, no. And it tore, sadly. So it's been a long road of recovery for her. It's great to see her back out there. Yeah. It takes longer than a sore throat. <laughs> <laughs> Leighton to lay it wide. Now, Ayedo. And Saez, who I thought played a good game the other night, really, with the team under a lot of pressure. She looked the most composed of the defenders. 
But they don't have a lot of height, do they, in the team to defend set pieces, which will be a concern for the coach. Christo Dan is about to come on. So I think maybe Casey Short will go to the right and Christo Dan will go to a, well, new position of, of left back. She's such a versatile former striker, wide player. You are correct. Down on the left, mm. Casey Short moving out to the right. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not telepathic or anything <laughs> like that. But we, we were told that was going to happen when we put you. Out. I, you should have <laughs> taken full credit for yeah, that. Yeah, actually. you should have done, shouldn't I? <laughs> Don't peel back the curtain, Ian. <laughs> so far, so good on the road to recovery. We wish her well, Kelly. Guerrero towards Araya. Another problem Chile have really is they don't really have any speed to get behind that US defense. They haven't got a flyer. This is uh, Latelia devising something new. He knew he had to for this game be very very pleased I think with the, the way they've played so far Crystal Dunn's first involvement since coming on the former Chelsea player now back playing in the United States that's nice movement from the US early ball short best move so far Pugh goes down in the box referee says penalty she's given it foul by Saez on Pugh and that came at the end of a fluent US move Fluent U.S. move all started by Crystal Dunn on that left side. And then it was Casey Short on the right side with that beautifully placed ball. That's a good call by the referee. I think that's a clumsy tackle. That's a penalty kick. Yeah, because the initial contact was outside, but it carried on into the area. So referee's decision, I think, is fair enough. Alex Morgan is going to take it to look to... Add to her 90 US goals. Not too many protests really from Chile. So the chance for the US to take the lead here in the 34th minute in San Jose. And it's a brilliant save, that by Cristiane Endler. There might still be more to do. And then he's smuggled in by Pugh. And the US get the goal anyway. They kept the ball alive, the US, after that superb save by Endler. And Pugh was able to finish it off. Here's the original ball in. Pugh just getting an elbow in there, a shoulder in front of her. And then the penalty kick, and look at the reaction by the U.S. players. Alex Morgan, Pugh, everyone crashing goal. Great reaction by the players, and especially after the encroachment call from the last game. No. None of them moved early. Uh, it was a, a little bit of a nonsense, all of that, and <laughs> going back to Friday. But uh, Mallory Pugh, it is, who takes advantage with her 12th goal for her country. She's uh, managing one on an average every three caps. What a nice save by Inler, though. Inler, they give a lot of credit to them being able to qualify for the World Cup with her goal tipping. Gianna Davidson is caught out there by Araya. Lara's up in support. Can she finish it off here for Chile? And the US get away with it. And in particular, Gianna Davidson, who got caught in possession. In the uh, NWSL today, Chicago Red Stars 5, Sky Blue have been struggling nil. That is not a shock. No, and that means that Chicago actually qualifies for the playoffs. They go through. They're one of the top four. That means Utah is out mm. with that win tonight. Jockeying for position now in those playoffs with Seattle playing Portland on Friday. One of the reasons that uh, Lindsey Horan has been left on the 
bench which will be needed in that game for Portland among others the US do have the lead. Just a little bit of opportunism by Pugh again there. Lavelle not quite able to sparkle in the way she did last Friday. Stan Davidson gets the ball away to Morgan Bryan and now Crystal Dunn. Not accurate but a mistake by Guerrero. Let's in Tobin Heath here. Thought about the shot. Plays a cute little ball, Lavelle can finish it, what a save that is by Endler. That was absolutely top draw. Sensational save, really. The timing, she sets, her angle. And what a little ball that sends in by Tobin Heath, just a little flick. Rosenfeld is in, and Endler just makes a beauty of the save. Such a quick reaction save. Yeah, she made herself big. Six-foot goalkeeper. There aren't too many of those around in uh, women's world soccer. Endler's got a big reputation. She didn't look good on crosses the other night, but she's made a couple of big saves here in this match. Worth another look, this, really. Look at this little touch, too. That's a lovely Tobin ball, Heath. isn't it? Yeah, just to lift it up. Hitler doesn't go to ground. How many times do you see a keeper go to ground early? She stays big, to your point. Yeah. Three times Chile's player of the year, Cristiane Endler, captain. And that's why Paris Saint-Germain, big club in Europe, want her as their... Uh, goalkeeper she was at Chelsea for a while as well and in Spain with Valencia played in helped on there by David Turner he is in off the other side of the bar 2-0 and that time the Chilean defense were a little hesitant they stood they watched I wonder really whether the goalkeeper might have come and got it there's an inquest going on look at the inquest going on in that Chilean team about this, but look US the, don't care. Look at the hesitation in the comes and she, she stops. She caught, gets caught a little bit in that no man's land. She wasn't sure whether to come or not. And he makes sure she finishes that one off. Tobin Heath, who's played in two World Cup finals for the US, on the mark there. And now it's. Uh, Difficult one, really, for Endler, who's had such a great game apart from that. That really, I think that was her ball, wasn't it, Julie? Yeah, but, you know, you could see that. Like, am I going to be able to get there? I think she probably could have, but just that little hesitation yeah. is what ended up killing her, especially since she had no cover there either. U.S. two up. And they'll want to be ruthless and clinical and get in the mood for the big jobs that they have in the next year. Not shooting Chile by 32 shots to two in these uh, two matches so far. That doesn't tell the story of an improved display by Chile tonight for my money. Lopez, who looks quite comfortable on the ball. Aiedo being moved towards the left and uh, fouled. Tobin Heath, a favourite player of many followers of US women's soccer with the goal. And that's the earlier one where Araya and uh, Lara were getting involved in uh, a little bit earlier on. Here's Rocio Soto. Oh, given away, here's LaBelle. Straight at the goalkeeper. Just the last five minutes have been a few mad moments in that Chile defence. Their composure just rocked a little. Araya here. Plowing a lone furrow, doing a good job. Looks an intelligent player and shows her strength to hold on to it there and still has it too needed a bit more support around her. Lara wasn't really able to 
provide it. Heath. Crystal Dunn is lightning quick. What do you think about the reinvention of Crystal Dunn as a, as a left back? It seems to be working, doesn't it? Yeah, I think she's great wherever she is, <laughs> honestly. She plays forward for Carolina Courage and has been doing so well there, scoring and assisting. And so, I mean, that's the beauty of her, really. She's so versatile. I think we actually said to her when she played left back for the first time this year, we said, be careful, you'll end up there. You played so well. <laughs> yeah. And she laughed and said, I know, and here she is. Yeah, but I think most players' attitude is anywhere in yeah, the starting lineup, exactly. I'll take it. And that's what she'll say. I'll try and get her to say, what do you prefer? And she goes, anywhere, yeah. honestly. Certainly very, very competitive to get a game in the midfield or attacking areas for this uh, US side. Dal Kemper to play the free kick in. And a chance for Julia. She scores plenty of headers and she'll be thinking that might have been another one. Chile so vulnerable on set pieces again. No one popping out. Look at Julia just wide open on that backside. And this is a play that's planned, right? Yeah. And Chile just cannot react always you find a player that's just sitting there especially a player like Ertz who you know is so good on set pieces well it was a bit criminal by that Chilean defense uh, they didn't win the first ball and then they were nowhere near on the second ball either which uh, that'll be something that the coach in the background there Latelia will be working on you need to be uh, on red alert at all times it's starting to give the ball away and the USA to their credit sense that they've sensed the blood Pew already on the score sheet. Fancy Schwartz got a little bit of work to do there. She's not really done it either. The header didn't have enough on it. Aedo gets her head up, looks for support. It's arriving. Here's Yesenia Lopez. Decent looking ball in was Davidson fouled in midair. It looked a bit like it. And then it's uh, wide by Rocia Soto. Beg your pardon, uh, Santa Banez. Last two minutes of the first half. Game okay, possession squandered. Doing good work by Araya. I think she's done ever so well there, up front, on her own. Managed to make it stick most of the time. She's the one who picked Tierna Davidson to get in. Yeah as well with their best chance really of the night coming up at halftime we'll have another look in a bit more detail at the uh, qualifying draw that the u.s have got for the world cup in october next month we'll uh, look at the highlights of this first half in case you missed anything and we'll have our special guest megan rapino who's uh, out with a rib injury at the moment but is doing some great charity work which she'll tell us all about among other things Claudia Soto wide to Yevaldin Leton now Aedo under pressure from Casey Short a high press could have produced a mistake but it hasn't Chile have done that they do like to play out from the back but you've got to be very comfortable on the ball and have good technical players to do that and make it work and they were unable to retain possession and it's led to a few problems it's brave isn't it brave or somewhat crazy sometimes Kevin, he's having a little bit of trouble with her breathing. Two minutes of added time. I think she was just caught by a, a high boot. Claudia Soto. This time it's Lopez breaking furthest forward. A 
and a couple of ladies yesterday who are making a big documentary about the Chile team and their adventures and journey to the World Cup. Getting full access from the team, all part of the growth of the game in Chile, the long, thin country down in the southwest of South America. Here's Heath, typical piece of work from the flying winger. And she's kept it alive, there's the cross in, and LaBelle couldn't get enough on it for the goal. Great build-up play by Tobin Heath. And this is the magic of Tobin Heath. She's going to take all players. She's going to find a little gap. She looks up and look at Rose Lavelle out of midfield. Just finds that little seam. She's coming a little bit late. No one tracks her right through the middle. Uh, she's just trying to get a little deflection on it. Everything right but the finish there for the U.S. It remains 2-0 in stoppage time at the end of the first half. Chile had a good first 25 minutes, but uh, since they conceded that first goal, it has looked as if the U.S. might score a hatful. And it's looking like the fatigue is setting in a little bit, isn't it? Those tired legs we were talking about that you thought that would carry over to Friday. Here they're starting to show. Yeah. From Friday. That's a nice piece of play by Araya there. She's been the pick of the Chilean team. Lopez to play it wide. Rocia Soto didn't get her head up and look. And that is half time with the US in a predictable 2-0 lead. Doesn't tell the whole story. Mallory Pugh got the first, Tobin Heath the second. It was a penalty saved out from uh, Alex Morgan. When we return, we'll look at the CONCACAF Women's World Cup qualifying draw and we'll have Megan Rapino joining us. Lots to talk about and we'll be back in just a second or two. Old Spice. She knows best. Welcome back to San Jose with the USA leading Chile by two goals to nil at halftime. An incident packed the first half. The second half coming up. Don't go away. But big news today. The qualifying draw has been made for the Women's World Cup qualifying section. And the United States drawn alongside Mexico, Trinidad and Tobago and Panama. They've never lost to those last two. They have lost on one occasion in 2010 to Mexico. But it, it, they ought to do it, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, and I think it's actually good that the sequence of games, as you're going to see, goes Mexico first, and then Panada, Panama and Trinidad. So the U.S. knows what they get out of that game, right? Of, of course, they get the three points, and then they know what they need to get out of the other two. But in the scenario they don't get those three points, they also know what to expect in those next games. So, you know, it, it, it's a situation where the U.S. with 3.5, being three and a half teams go through, they're going to be in good shape. Yeah, we, we should explain there are eight teams in it altogether. Three definitely qualify for the World Cup, and the fourth have to play Argentina in a playoff. The USA, well, it would be a sensation if they didn't make it, and they are the team to beat, really, I think, at the World Cup finals itself in France next year. In a moment, we're going to have Megan Rapino. She'll have a, something to say as well, I think, about that, uh, that qualifying draw. But uh, the NWSL goes on. The playoffs coming down to the last regular season game. Lindsay Horan and the Portland Thorns hosting the Seattle Reign in the battle for the second seeding place. That's Friday, prime time on Lifetime. When we return, we'll have a look back on that uh, first half. And you can see those USA's two goals again. See you in a moment or two. Hey guys, it's Taylor Twalman at ESPN, and I am with two-time World Cup winner Julie Foudy from ESPN. And 2017 was a big year with U.S. soccer. Along with us at Think Taylor, we created a pledge for the players, but now the referees, coaches, and parents, we need you to take the pledge. I've taken the pledge. Yes, you have. I have. You too should take the pledge because we need to protect the little brains and heads of our children. So join us in taking the pledge. Through September 11, it's Concussion Awareness Week. Join over 4 million athletes, parents, and coaches by visiting recognizetorecover.org and take the TT Pledge.
Yeah, that's a brilliant cause as well with uh, our colleague Taylor Twelman at the heart of things. But uh, let's have a look back at that first half. The US in charge. Chile started the game pretty well. They looked a lot better than they did last Friday, didn't they? And then they got a little fatigued, didn't they, in that first mm. half? And you saw the US confidence start to come around and the rhythm, most importantly, come around. And then they had some success on goal. So this is going to be an interesting second half for Chile, for sure. Yeah, fluent move, wasn't it, that set up the, the penalty to begin with from one end of the pitch to the other. And yeah, the, the, the foul goes on inside the box after the initial contact outside. Morgan's penalty saved, but still Mallory Pugh via her knee scores. <laughs> and a good response by three, four players. Jim Look at this little ball in by Tobin Heath. Just a little chip and the great save by Inler to stay big. Rose Lavelle probably could have slotted that one if she kept it low. And then Chile just continues to struggle in the air with set pieces. This one, Tobin Heath on the backside. Inler hesitates a little bit. The ball is just left bouncing. No defender to be seen as we've seen so many times with Chile on set pieces. And Heath makes them pay for that one. 2-0 it is then at halftime. We'll have the second half in a moment. And Megan Rapino is going to join us in just a second. See you then. Smirnoff Vodka is made in America for everyone in America. No matter who you are, where you come from, what you look like. Or who wore it better. Is it me? No, sweetie. It's me. Hello? Sir, I'm gonna need you to calm down. Reach under your seat. What? These are just old friends growing big Pull out the pomade and apply it. Where's that runway? Hey. Use Old Spice. She knows best. 2 0 to the United States. The American Outlaws paying tribute to Redding, California, which is the. Uh, the base of our guest, Megan Rapino, is injured for this game. That's why she's not playing and joining us. But Megan's involved in uh, fundraising activities after these terrible scenes in Northern California, about two and a half hours north of us here in San Jose. Large areas decimated. A fifth of the population of Shasta County displaced. So much misery, so much devastation and trauma for all of those concerned. I think the fire is now 90% under control but uh welcome along megan thanks thanks for joining us it's brilliant what you're doing trying to to raise money just tell us a bit more about it yeah um basically kind of uh, spawned on a conversation my mom and i were having i was asking her kind of the best place um, to donate or what i should do and then it kind of just turned into this thing the game got announced here and it was like well what can we really do so kind of uh, made it, you know, try to go viral. Uh, we raised over $150,000. $150,000 already. Yeah, wow. it's it's uh, pretty incredible. We partnered with Shasta Regional Community Foundation there, a long time uh, organization there has worked with, um, you know, fires in the past. So feel very comfortable with them and um, been over like 500, you know, donations on Facebook and a couple mm. larger donations. It's been pretty exciting. Yeah, and, and some of the people from Reading are here tonight. Some of the victims, I've guessed, have been invited along, yeah? Yeah. Because I saw you signing the shirts for them earlier on. Yeah, we have about uh, just under 70 people that all came, a couple of buses Same. came down from Reading. Um, it's pretty incredible to be able to spend some time with them. Uh, before the game and talk to them, obviously take some pictures and uh, have a little piece of home with me here today. Yeah, I mean, this is all close to your heart. This is this is your area, isn't it? So you, yeah. you must know some of the heartbreaking stories. Yeah, definitely. Um, different friends and family. Actually, my mom's co-workers, um, Candace and Ed Duggan, um, known them for, you know, basically since I was a baby. Um, they're here today. They lost their home. One of my sister's co-workers um, and just kind of everyone around, you know, you sort of know people who know people. Um, it's just devastating for the community. Just tell us how people can help. I think it's ussoccer.com forward slash car fund, right? Yes. The car, it's the car fire, yes. isn't it? It's been, yeah. Yep, so you can go to that website. It's all over it uh, my Twitter, uh, my social media, Facebook. Um, you can donate in, in a bunch of ways. Please, if you can't donate, um, share it on, on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all of that for you for doing that, Pino. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and our thoughts are all with all the families and everybody thank affected you. by that. If you're, if you're watching tonight, let's hope things can return to normal. It's pretty frightening scenes. Back to the game here, second half's underway. Megan's going to stay with us for a, a little while yet as we uh, watch the action unfold and Alex Morgan trying to make progress. 
Then a change of referee, by the way. Karen Abt has oh, no. stepped what? in. The original referee's got a hamstring oh, injury. Oh, no, we've got an injury. <laughs> it's catching, not a sore throat. <laughs> she hasn't lost her voice. No. <laughs> it's not as bad as Julie's, but <laughs> sub nonetheless. Oh, I'm, I'm impressed they had another referee around. <laughs> no. <laughs> Full disclosure, I did try yeah. and get Pino to do the whole game with me. I was like, come on, sister, just come early. You can commentate the whole game. This would be great I can't practice. even talk. I kid you not, I was at an English Premier League game where a bloke out the crowd who was qualified had to come and run the line. Oh you couldn't God. make it up. It's played in by Tobin Heath, and that's another goal for the okay, U.S. Carly Lloyd is the scorer, having come on as substitute. I reckon that was her first touch. Now that was quick, wasn't it? Great ball in by Tobin Heath, by the way. Yeah. How many great balls in by Tobin Heath have we seen tonight? And literally, this is payback for Friday night for Carly. Mm -hmm. She had two call back on Friday night and just a beautiful chip ball in. All it needed was a little flexion. You saw Rose Laval almost get a similar one in the first half. Carly Lloyd starting on the road to 200 goals. She, she'd reached 100. Yeah. Might struggle a bit to get to 200, I think, but uh, that's a nice header, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, she just comes off comes off both of those defenders. I think Rose got in the way a little bit there, helped her with a little bit of a pick. Great header by Carly. 3-0 to the USA. That's uh, exactly the way it finished. What, what is Last your, Friday. your injury update, Megan, actually? Injury update, well, I don't want to give too much away as we have a big game coming up against Portland. <laughs> but uh, it's not that serious. It's it's kind of a little bit of a, a pain management thing from here on out. But obviously we've already um, secured our spot in the playoffs. Um, we would love to have a home game. Um, so we're going to try to take care of business in Portland um, and then just get on to the playoffs. That's where, the, that's where it really starts. And not giving too much away. You've got a chance of making that game, have you, with this rib injury? I've got a chance, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah it's still it's still a bit sore. Um, you know, I don't want to you know have to struggle through this whole week and then play and then have to struggle through the whole next week. So, uh, hoping to be 100% by then. But if not, uh, we've secured a playoff spot, so that's kind of where my focus is. Morgan's cross deflected and easily caught that time by Christiana Endler. Just a recap on that qualifying draw in case you didn't catch it as we see Carly Lloyd's confirmation of our 101st career goal. What do you think about that? Mexico, Trinidad, Tobago and Panama. Bring it. I like it. We do. Uh, <laughs> I heard you say in, uh, in the halftime we do have a little bit of uh, history with Mexico. There's only probably a couple players left on the team that remembers uh, what it was like to have to go through. Oh. No Another goal for the US with the flags up. This one is not going to count for Alex Morgan. Not her night so far. Mm -mm. Good run though. Good getting on the back shoulder of that defender. I think, was that Tobin again, that ball? Yep. Oh, great ball by Tobin. Dead offside it was, definitely. You could see that at the moment the ball was played. Just a half a yard in it. Stuck on 90. Not a bad number to be stuck on that. I mean, I wish I was stuck on 90. <laughs> yeah. It's going to take me three careers to get get to where Alex and Carly are going with those well, goals. I've got you down as 140 caps and 38 goals. And yeah. loads and loads of assists, though. Yeah, yeah. Loads of assists. Probably more assists than goals. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Araya out to Ayedo now for Chile. Not been able to get forward that often, and that's been the problem. They've given the ball away just a little bit too easily. That was a little cheap. Steep learning curve for them on their way to the World Cup. Sienna Davidson. Cool as you like. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for Calmly coming. Calmly <laughs> just, dribbles through just, three people. Just calm, cool and collected. Lavelle to play it wide. Tobin Heath again. Carly Lloyd's waiting in the middle. Cross doesn't have enough depth on it. There's confirmation of the games. They will be all in Cary, North Carolina between October the 4th and October the 10th. That's the group the USA are in. There's another group as well. Eight teams in it. Three definitely make it through to the World Cup in France next summer. Would you prefer to have Mexico in your group so then you don't face them on the other side yeah. for semis? Yeah. Um, not necessarily. I mean, I think we're at a point now where we're willing to take on anyone. Um, I think we want to play the best teams all the time. So 
Uh, we just saw them recently, uh, I think in May or June. Uh, Wes had a two-game stint against them, so feel good about the results we had there. Obviously, it'll it'll be ticked up a notch with the competitiveness, you know, having a World Cup on the line, but um, I think it focuses us a little bit more. Yeah. The U.S. have already beaten Germany, England, Brazil, Japan, Denmark, and Mexico twice this year. Stiff competition, I think, a very good idea because it will get stiff in the closing stages of the World Cup. Absolutely. You go all the way back to the 2011 World Cup. I know. I remember that? No. All of a sudden, I'm getting pretty old here. <laughs> <laughs> Still playing the guitar, by the way. Still playing a little bit, yeah. yeah. That's good. Still playing. Got to have my off-field hobbies. <laughs> Keeps me sane. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's Francisca Lara. Speaking of, you were paying attention to the uh, other game happening tonight, I believe. Oh, I know. We got a big WNBA game. We got game five going on yeah. in Seattle. Actually, I don't even know the score right now. Yeah. Um, stressing me out a little bit. I'll um, get it for you. Yeah. Todd will Thank give you. it in your ear. Todd, right. pull the score for Can we just get the feed in the mic or yeah. feed in the, uh, the headset? So, Sue breaks her nose in, yeah. the, in game four, right? Yeah. And is playing. I understand. Tonight. She is playing. She actually, this is not her first, second, or third, or fourth nose break. I think she's had a number of them. So she already had a, a fancy mask, mask made. She just pulled it out of the locker, pulled it out of the back. Ooh. Why? Uh, it's wide. You can keep okay, talking. Okay, it's wide. <laughs> just wide. Alex, I'm in the morning. middle of a story, <laughs> and you're going to take a shot. So, yeah, that, you, this, this is the commentary Alex. world. <laughs> oh, Alex, on. we're trying right. to talk basketball. Alex, we're yeah. talking about the game yeah. five here. Do carry on. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, do you want to know the score? Yes. 57. They're down 57 to 54 in the third. Okay, that's fine. That's You're close. That's, that's one, one three away. So she's fine playing with that match? She's fine, yeah. I mean, it sounds terrible to me. I feel like it would just be so distracting, but I think she's used to it. She's, she's played a number of times in it before. Yeah, she was not happy though. Poor thing. It's all swollen. She's going to have a big black eye. <laughs> does she have her voice? She does have her voice. Okay, good. And she's a good Yeah, shot. and I'm sure she's using it. <laughs> Crossing towards Aido. Casey Short just doing enough there to make sure Aido didn't get on the uh, end of that. Goes for a throw in. Megan, how long do you want to play on for after this World Cup? You're going to carry on again? Still, still enjoying it? Yeah, still I mean, this is, yeah, this is the best job that I could ever think of. So as long <laughs> as I feel good and able to, you know, perform on the field, I want to play as, as long as I can. Actually, Sydney LaRue asked me, um, she was like, after this, I'm like, are you going to keep playing? Because you're going to be like 40. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, Sid. Nobody, <laughs> we don't need to talk about that. Yes, I want to keep playing. Why not? You're a long time retired, aren't you? Yeah. I hope so. This is a great job. It's Lopez now for Chile. Aedo, the little playmaker, finding it a little bit harder at this level than she did in the Copa America where she scored three goals. Good challenge by Julia. It's in the middle of the field to get the ball back. And a little bit behind Alex Morgan on this occasion. Can we just talk about some of the challenges that Julie Ritz does in the middle of the field. Well, I'm not but, going near her, that's for sure, yeah. ever. I mean, it, and it's all these little things, like the Chilean best opportunity tonight is, you know, Julie Ritz comes sliding in. She's everywhere. Coming back into her, you know, into her defensive box to make that save. It's those little things that make such a difference. Yeah, you just never get a chance to breathe in the middle with her. Chile have got an injury. Megan, where do you feel that this, this team is in relation to other World Cup parties you've been with at this stage? I mean, it looks quite exciting. I would imagine you're quite optimistic, aren't you? Absolutely. Um, I'm really excited where we are. Um, I feel like we've, you know, obviously come off a couple of years seeing a ton of people um, trying out different systems, etc. But I feel like the team's really kind of settling into itself. Uh, I feel really excited. It's different than a lot of teams we've had in the past. We, you know, we have a, a younger roster, a less experienced roster, but I think a better roster overall. So I think getting these big games, obviously with Tournament Nations and She Believes, those games that sort of had that artificial pressure in them uh, has been great for this group. And um, I think qualifiers will be great. And then, yeah, it's just time to roll. Time for World Cup after that. Knock on wood with qualifying. 
going to be pretty exciting. I think mean, you're getting yeah. more and more teams coming through, aren't you, now mm. as well? I mean, last, last year we saw Netherlands coming in and winning the European Championship. Right. Not many people were predicting that before it started. Oh, it's yeah. so much fun. I mean, if it, like women's football just every year, um, just exponentially growing. Um, teams are getting so much better. The World Cup was so competitive in 2015. Euros was super competitive. Um, I'd imagine this World Cup is going to be the same. And it's in France. I mean, how do you oh, do yeah. that? It'd be good for the spectators, good for us players, mm. beautiful stadiums. Trains all run on time. Exactly. When they're not on strike. Yeah, yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Very true. I, when I lived in France for that year playing for Lyon, yeah. there, I, I learned quickly what, what the strike what the strike system was. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what is happening all the time? Like, oh, yeah, it's just normal. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, a decent bottle of wine there as well. But not that players are allowed such things, of course. No, we wouldn't dare. <laughs> Be before we let you go, Pino, do you want to make any uh, NWSL predictions for us? Well, I mean, you got to back Seattle Reign, right? <laughs> of course. Um, that's your team. Yeah, yeah that's, that's my team, of course. I mean, obviously, uh, North Carolina, I think, is, is the clear favorite. I think you'd, you'd be uh, just lying if you said any different. Oh, nice try, Carl. Um, obviously, they're the favorites. They're the ones everyone's gunning for. Um, but with it, they have the pressure. Um, I think they were the favorites last year as well and um, had a crazy final, uh, to be honest. But um, it was crazy. It was crazy. Red so Stars, yeah. Stars got through tonight. Rain. Okay, so yeah. it's... Yeah, they beat Sky Blue. They won 5-0, five, five was it? I think yeah, it was five yeah, 5 nil. Oh, man. Not a shock, really, I don't think. No. I think it's going to be a great playoffs, though. I'm really excited for it to get started. So you, you've got a bit of pro professional work to do here and read our promo for your game oh. coming up on Friday. Come on, okay. sister. The National Women's Soccer League playoff come down to the last regular season game. <laughs> Lindsay, Oof. who's Lindsay Haran? <laughs> and, the, and the Portland whoever's <laughs> host the Seattle Reign <laughs> and yours truly in the battle for second <laughs> place C. Friday. Yours true. Prime time on Lifetime. <laughs> I think you got a job in Hollywood with the last <laughs> bit. A little dramatic, but you got to get the people interested. Uh, yeah, it'd be a good game. Great game on Friday. It's probably going to be a packed house. Yeah, uh, hey. should be good. Always good to play in Portland. Love to see all you're doing with the yeah, fundraiser and yeah, supporting all these great causes. Thank you. Thank good, you. Yeah, good we'll throw that. that up there again for yeah, everyone. We'll, we'll remind yeah. everybody how to raise the money. Thanks, Megan, for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for the time. Thank you great. so much for having great me see on. You up there. Okay. And we we'll look forward to seeing you back down there again. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Get healthy. Thank you, guys. Take care. That's Morgan with the cross in. Our thanks to Megan Rapino. We might just have a career beyond football as well. I She's think. so awesome. I love her. How do you not love Megan Rapino? Yeah. Well, I think just about so everybody fun. does, don't yeah. they? Yeah. It's going to David some winning the head of his Crystal Dunn, who's already been uh, much involved since coming on as substitute. Slightly more advanced role for her just at the moment. Daniela Zamora is out there now for Chile, and they're going to make another substitution here with uh, Sue Helen Galath to come on the defender, replacing uh, Rocia Soto. 31st cap it is for Galath, who plays for uh, Zaragoza on uh, the north coast of Spain. So plenty experienced enough. But these friendlies for Chile away Nine, to the top-ranked yeah, team in the yeah. world. These are these apart from their Copa America experiences, which are obviously vital. These will be the biggest games they've played, the biggest yeah. tests anyway. And I love the response when you, we asked the coach. We, we said, what did, what did he say? We asked the players, what did the coach say? And they said uh, he was happy that they saw a different reality. Yeah, it's a nice way of putting it, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, which is, you know, and he understands, like, we have to play the best to get better. Off comes Rose Laval. So very uh, promising. 
And we are going to see Lindsay Horan here, despite the fact that she's needed by her club Portland for that big game we've been talking about on Friday. Tobin Heath as well with a big smile on her face. And on comes A-Rod, as she's known, Amy Rodriguez, who missed two whole seasons with the birth of her second son. I think she had a crucial injury as well, didn't she? It? So great to see her back, right literally when she got back from recovering from the birth of her son. Mm. She tore her ACL, was out another year, so it's great to see her out there. Called in because of Megan Rapinoe's injury to this uh, squad and getting a run out as well. Deserves that 132nd cap as Carly Lloyd plays it to Crystal Dunn. Good save again by Ender, who got her big frame down well to palm that away. Strong hand too. It's so much it's created. Look at this run by Amy Rodriguez. She cuts across, takes the defender with her, and opens up that gap for Crystal Dunn. That's the movement of Amy Rodriguez that makes that play happen. It really was a good save. You see, corner kick, and this time a Chilean head does win it first. That hasn't happened too many times in these uh, two games. Here's Haran. Is Rodriguez now, plays for the Utah club. Julie Ertz, they're working this very well so far. And again, Endler has to save from the luckless Alex Morgan. A goal and two assists tonight for Tobin Heath. She did have a great night. Everywhere with her service as well, getting people in. She had that great little chipped in ball, just a tiny little chip to Rose Laval, who almost finished that if it weren't for the great Ingler save. And this is Jill Ellis managing minutes, of course, for Portland. And that's why you probably didn't see Horan start. Here's Rodriguez. We'll go for a throw in in the end. Chile having to work hard here towards the uh, tail end of a second game in four days. It's uh, Funny the way things go, Chile and the USA had never met in history until Friday, and uh, two games come along at once. Done. Just stepped up the tempo, I fancy, a little bit here. The USA is going for the jugular. Horan, nice work there. Pick the pass. Carly Lloyd. You have loved getting that goal I think she'll enjoy to having something to prove again it wouldn't I wouldn't put it past her to move oh, no. up a level now with the World Cup coming up and, and maybe even regaining her place I know at all that's that's how Carly loves to operate as well she'll tell you that like you know I love the doubters because it just drives me mm, fuels the fire a yeah. bit yeah it's on the score sheet Tiana Davidson. A bit better from Chile defensively. Haran. Kicks out a cross of sorts. Rodriguez goes down. Nothing given for that. Played in again by Brian. Just a bit too long. It's a decent ball though. Davidson wants another goal to add to the, her first the other night. She's like, I got it on my favorite left foot. I'm going to take it. See what happens when a 19-year-old gets a goal? They just keep going. That's goal since 2016, since the last Olympics for the US. Alex Morgan predictably on top there. Carly Lloyd, most of her goals have come uh, in the more distant past, but that's largely because she's been a substitute more latterly, not getting as many minutes. Carly had a run of scoring 33 in 34 games that was followed by four in the next 26 make that yeah. five in 27 now after the one tonight just kept in play but it's all usa really now too strong bit too powerful picking the gaps lloyd won't quite get that just a little bit too much on the pass Offside flag up as well. Brand did well though to solve that pressure, find an outlet. It's close. 
right back, keeping him on, almost. If you joined us late, you may have missed the injury in the very first minute almost to uh, McCall Zaboni. We've heard it's a left elbow injury and will need further evaluation, so they'll scan that and have a look at it. Let's hope that's mm. nothing that's going to keep her out too long term. By the way, uh, Kristen Press, the star the other night, not involved tonight because of uh, what US soccer say is a family commitment. Uh, nothing more than that. It's Amy Rodriguez. Still got that burst of pace. Short. Not the ball she was looking for. Given away rather cheaply by Chile again. Little naively running into trouble. It's Alex Morgan here. Chilean defence in the shape of Claudia Soto. Getting it away in the nick of time. Galaz got caught in possession there and that caused big problems for Chile. Lessons these that they're going to have to learn when they get to France. Well, look at that. <laughs> 22 corners in the last two games. Most of those, 17 of them, were on Friday, mind you. Dahl Kemper, who was the Women's Soccer League Defender of the Year last year. Carolina Courage player. That team has done so well this year. 13 points ahead of the next person behind him. Yeah. Next team behind him, which is Seattle. North Carolina with 54, Seattle with 41. You heard Megan Rapino talking about them being the favorites. Mm. <clears throat> Davidson. Accelerating, finds a good ball there. Done. Turning, twisting, always going over. I think Crystal Dunn has given a big lift to this team as well. She's been active, getting forward. And as we talked about, always dangerous with all three lines. Brazil are the only South American team the USA have ever lost to in many meetings. Do you think Brazil are a factor at the, the World Cup in this sort of post-martyr time? Uh, I, I, I mean, Brazil is going to be good. I don't think they could win it, though. I don't think they have enough. And I don't blame Brazil for that. I blame their federation. I don't think they've developed enough players. Yeah. I don't think they've supported their women enough. Sadly, they constantly have to battle for change. There's the teams that have qualified already. Scotland joined the list today. Germany, France, England, all there. They'll be dangerous, and especially Australia, I think, as well. Japan always with a lot of good technical players. And, of course, winners of the 2011 World Cup against US in the final. So it's going to be good, I think. I think each World Cup, each succeeding World Cup, will be uh, bigger than the one before. TV ratings going up, crowd interest. France have a real good shot at, at winning it. Yeah, I think the they host. do. So yeah, yeah. I think the support there is going to be phenomenal. Yeah. Well, imagine if they were men's and women's right. World Cup winners. Never hear the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty big coverage over there in France as well in the uh, Specialist sports newspaper Le Keep. I read about three or four pages about Olympic Lyon and the night of the Champions League final. Yeah, good. Yeah. Didn't understand most of it, but. Uh, that, your French was pretty good, actually, in hockey. Yeah. Or was that German? French is a little bit better, but only a little bit. <laughs> in petit peu. <laughs> Another change coming up here with uh, Ana Gutierrez coming on to replace Francisco Lara. Six substitutes allowed. Chile with an average age, by the way, of uh, 25. Interestingly, Julie, listen to this. 
in one or two recent games they've been using a 14 year old player called Margarita Colinao. She's not been brought on this trip, plays for Colo Colo. 14, how good must she be? It's one of the Chilean top clubs. Yeah. At 14 playing for them and for Chile. I think the coach thought that playing against the USA was, was too big an ask for her at this stage. But uh, it'll be interesting when they pick their 23 for the World Cup, whether she's in that 23. He's the guy who will decide. Play towards Araya. It's dropping dangerously around there. Davidson hooking it away. Haven't had a lot of defending to do, but there might be a little bit more. Gutierrez caught in possession. Crystal Dunn accelerating away. Oh, not too many options, but finds Carly Lloyd very well. Lloyd inside here. Couldn't keep the shot down. There's a good challenge by Gutierrez at the end. It just about did enough. And this is the the embarrassment of riches that the U.S. has. I mean, these are two two players who both came off the bench tonight. Carly Lloyd coming in, got a goal with her first touch, and then this is the kind of chaos they can create. Crystal Dunn been moved into midfield started at that outside back position i mean it is going to be tough for jill to cut down to her final roster for Concacaf. she's got to get to 20. yeah she's sitting at it's 20 is it 20. yeah they asked them i thought it was 23. they're sitting at 24 23 here yeah nice problem to have though i think yeah exactly it's better than scratching around trying to find players who are good enough Alas to take the throw for Chile. Becky Sauerbrunn about to come on, standing on the sidelines. I was wondering when that would happen, because that's going to be for, I think, Miss Tierna Davidson, who's got, as we talked about earlier, a game on Friday against mm. Notre Dame for Stanford and a game mm. on Sunday against number two ranked team in the nation, University of North Carolina. So Paul Ratcliffe is somewhere here going. Why isn't she coming out? Oh, she's not coming out, I'm told. But she's 19. She can play every day. <laughs> right. that's, that's what some coaches say. That 19, don't, don't, if you tell players that they need a rest, they'll, they'll suddenly feel tired. Look, she, oh. she looked to the sideline like she thought she was coming out. Yeah. And then she turned around, like, oh, it's you, Ertz. It's, it's Julie Ertz, and she's not coming out. And here comes Becky Sabron, the uh, oh-so-solid and reliable. 33-year-old has already been to uh, two World Cups for the U.S. Becky Sabron, who's played 142 games for the U.S. without scoring so far. She's like the Kate Markgraf of this era. Yeah. Well, the record is Christy Rampone. I think 252 <laughs> oh, without a goal. She we went, yeah. We used to say, Kate, go take that penalty, Kate. Go on, sister. You can pick up Kate's phone call when she hears <laughs> about that. <laughs> Here is Becky Sabron. Remember her playing in the semi final of the 2011 World Cup and doing a really, really good job. And you could see right there. And she was going to be uh, a big player for the years to come. Lindsay Horan, who's yet to taste a World Cup and is looking forward to it all immensely. If selected, of course, everybody has to have, add that yeah. bit. I mean, back to our embarrassment of riches conversation. We've got Sauerbrunn, Dahl Kemper, Tierna Davidson, who are great, three great center backs that they've been rotating through. but. If I had to put my money on the starting two for the Mexico game in October, I would say it would be Becky and Davidson. Tomorrow on ESPN Plus, we'll have uh, NYCFC and the Revs from Yankee Stadium. The boys in blue comfortably in the playoff picture, but the Revs sit below the red line and need to win. It's 7 o'clock Eastern for that one. Streaming live on the ESPN app as well. On Sunday, uh, we'll have the hottest team in MLS. This is the 16th of September. Let's break off for a moment. Nothing doing there. 
It's uh, DC United. Wayne Rooney doing great things there, taking on the New York Red Bulls from Audi Field. Uh, they've jumped into the playoff conversation in the Eastern Conference of uh, DC. That's 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific time for that game, and you'll be able to see it on the ESPN app from anywhere. Casey Short is the plan needing a little bit of attention here for the US. That's a chance for everybody to uh, rehydrate. Will Jill Ellis be happy with what she's seen tonight? I, I think she'll want them to be a bit cleaner in that final third still. I think that first part of the game with Chile was fresher, which is what more teams will be for longer minutes. They were connecting as well in that final third, but I mean, it, it's been a dominating performance, that's for sure. Yeah, we expected that. Just check on the goals again. There's a nice move, this. A foul on Pugh. Initial contact outside, but it went on inside, so penalty was fair enough. Morgan's penalty saved. Mallory Pugh knees it into the net. That was 1-0. And then 2-0. Mexican defense just going to sleep a little bit. Before that, there was that great save by Ember, but she couldn't keep out Tobin Heath that time. And here's a third from Carly Lloyd. And a beauty. She just needed a little something on it. Carly's so good in those situations. Literally her first touch coming into the second half. So the USA sitting pretty with uh, about 14 minutes remaining. Kinsey Short has had all kinds of injury problems before in her career. Able to uh, gingerly walk towards the sideline the Chicago Red Stars player whose team have won comfortably enough without her tonight pace is her big thing isn't it it is she's got great speed great defending as well thought she had a good game tonight gosh she says the last thing they want to see though in this final game before qualifiers is, is players limping off Casey Short going off, and uh, a crowd of, uh, it's a decent crowd here in San Jose, considering you know, it's just on the back of the holiday and, and everything like that, we, we wondered if it would be a bit more empty, uh, Rodriguez is in behind, uh, can't keep the shot down and <laughs> holds her head in her hands, uh, she knows she can do better. Debut was 13 years ago, I know, Amy Rodriguez for the US. Another change coming up here for Chile. And they're going to bring on uh, Javier Grace, the 18-year-old, who's only 4 feet 10 inches tall, weighs 100 pounds. To come and play uh, in a forward position, attacking midfield or forward. Only her ninth cap. Quick and formerly the captain of the under-20 side. And already barking out a few orders when she gets out there from the coach. doing that as well she takes her position up in a forward position out on the left hand side Chile would love a goal to give to the uh, biggish TV audience I'm sure watching again in Chile tonight seeing how they're getting on plunged pretty into the uh, into the deep ocean as it were Araya back playing a little deeper than she was in the first half where she was like a false number nine. Away by the goalkeeper, Ashlyn Harris, getting a run out. Her first game for the US since June. The uh, established number one now is Elisa Nea. You can't believe this one. You couldn't write it, really. <laughs> the USA are going to have to play with 10 women here because they'd used all the substitutes <laughs> and now Casey Short's got injured. Uh, yeah, th th that's got to be some kind of record. <laughs> <laughs> A few decades ago, no substitutes were allowed at all. Back in England, a few FA Cup finals finished 10 against 11 quite 
quite regularly. Nobody allowed on to replace a guy with a broken leg. Sorry, used them all. Yep. Around, lovely ball that. Rodriguez, got Carly Lloyd to her left, wants to go alone and uh, didn't get hold of it. Another of the US squad is actually from California, in her case from Forest Lake. You're from this, uh, you live around here, where's Forest Lake? Is you, you, you're talking to Amy Rodriguez? Yeah. I think it's Lake Forest. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Shall I get it wrong? So. I, you, you, you I, was, just I, was read, I was reading off a handout, sorry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> she actually lives in a town right near me, too. I was talking to her in Los Angeles last week saying, Sister, we gotta hang out a little bit. You're close, you're a neighbor. I can help babysit. My kids are <laughs> of babysitting age. <laughs> you can see though, what I love about Amy Rodriguez is she just brings this passion to the game. She holds her hand in her hands when she missed that shot and she just wants so badly to get into a game and make a difference. So you just love to see her get that chance. A popular player. Sabron fed down the line. It's Alex Morgan looks to spin in behind straight away. It's got all the uh, strikers' craft. Another Californian from the Diamond Bar. There you go. Did I get that one right? Not, not Bar Diamond. <laughs> Good ball again from Davidson. It says that uh, when she was a schoolgirl, her coach believed in Tiki Taka Barcelona style, looking after the ball. You can see that in the way she plays. So comfortable and confident. This is a bit nasty here. A little drag down. Alas with the challenge, which was illegal, as you could see. Davidson takes it quickly. The movement was good from Rodriguez. Very, very sharp, that. Flags up as well on the far side. Offside. Good idea, though, from the US. Let's have a check on this. Yep, mm. that's a great call by the official. It is. That's a tough one to catch, too. But again, the mobility of Rodriguez making that defense shift for Chile. Sure fever and passion for the game in Chile. Of course, the Copa America successes of recent years with uh, the likes of Alexis Sanchez at the heart of it, they didn't make the Men's World Cup, a big horrible shock. That's why they're uh, so delighted and so enamored with their women's team making amends, as it were, by getting to the Women's World Cup. A lot of defending for them to do now, though, and here's Morgan. Good determined run from her. Couldn't quite pull it back enough. And stays down as well. Alex Morgan, that's, that's always a, a worrying sight. That's one play you certainly would not want to be without. Hopefully that's uh, just a little knock, nothing too much. Mm. And while uh, Alex is getting some uh, treatment and that's being looked at, a reminder that the USA men's team, of course, were rebuilding with a young squad play Mexico always a big grudge match that's 9 10 Eastern time on uh, Tuesday the 11th for that game from Nashville from the Nissan Stadium to be exact Mexico getting to the last 16 of the World Cup again before being eliminated they started so it's well a, as well beating hurdle, Germany though, isn't it they just can't quite get over that one yeah well it's yeah. always the Kicker. They did. They did look. They had stretches where they looked so good in that World Cup too. 
I found myself rooting for them, Ian. Well, you better whisper that to the, the, <laughs> the men's team. I know. <laughs> well, we didn't have a team to root for, sadly. So many stories surrounding that fixture, so we'll look forward to bringing it to you. Here's uh, Becky Sabron now. Abidal Kemper. Everywhere you look around the team, Jill Ellis seems to have choices to make. Very strong there. Lindsay Horan, and what a ball she's picked in behind here by Amy Rodriguez. Rather left the ball behind. Just got it stuck, rather. Just got a little ahead of it, didn't she? Yeah, and, I, and I think there's a lot of of good to take from these two games obviously not the level of a you know a germany or a france or an england but it's a concacaf type style of team that they're going to be playing so you have that as well and i think this is a team that's ready they know they got all all the elements over three minutes remaining here Morgan Bryant back to Abby Dahl Kemper used to be another US player by the name of Abby who was quite useful <laughs> <laughs> as half as well as her she'll be laughing <laughs> I Abby. would even have taken a quarter of Abby and been happy yeah, Abby won back 184 goals, a uh, record for the U.S. Here's Galas for Chile. Zamora. It's hard to arrive, couldn't make it stick, and the flag was up anyway there to end another Chile attack. They just haven't been able to test the goalkeeper at all, Ashlyn Harris. Who's I wouldn't say she's been redundant, but uh, very little to do. <laughs> Maria Jose Urutio is going to come on to replace Karen Eraya late on. Eraya, one of the better players for Chile tonight, I'd say. She was good. She played all over the field tonight as well. Very good. Confirmation of that substitution plays for a club called Palestino. It's an amateur league in uh, Chile so far. Might turn professional, but most of these players are playing in, in Spain. In other venues, so they are professional players now. We were talking to Megan Rapino earlier on, and US soccer is partnering with the, uh, the national team forward Megan Rapino and the Shasta Regional Community Foundation to raise awareness and funds for relief efforts to aid the victims of the car fire which has devastated large parts of Northern California so go to ussoccer.com forward slash car fund if you would like to help with that extremely worthwhile cause Megan Rapino is from that area affected comes from Redding California and uh, several Victims of the fire are among uh, those watching tonight as special guests. Hit long by Claudia Soto. And Chile carve out one chance. The US will be determined to keep a clean sheet in professional fashion. No way through for Aedo. And away by. Dal Kemper, who's still got two more years left at Stanford, she was telling me. Uh, sorry, Tiana Davidson, studying management, science, and engineering. <laughs> Do you code? <laughs> Don't spell that again. <laughs> She's a smarty. 
I think I asked her one time, she was, what are you studying like, with that stuff? Like, give me an example. And she's like, relationships of systems. And I was like, oh, what does that mean? What kind of systems? I still don't know. So what did you study at Stanford then? I actually did pre-med. Oh. That. I could have done like journalism or something like that. All right. I wanted to be a doctor. I almost became well, a doctor. What the heck happened with that then? <laughs> no one would have trusted me. <laughs> I realized that quickly. Here's Carly Lloyd now for the US. Looking to add to their tally. And it's a good effort and a good save from Ender as well. Because that was traveling. Good shot from Lloyd. Good presence tonight by Lloyd as well. Another player who's given them a boost. And boy, you can tell she wants a second one. She's been cranking them, and as we know she can from out distance. But Endler again, proving why she's helped Chile get to this World Cup. Yeah, she made some big saves to keep the scoreline respectable. This will be played in again by Crystal Dunn. Here it comes. Goalkeeper as it ought to be, and she's been better on the crosses as well and living up more to her reputation this time in stoppage time now and it looks like we might have the, exactly the same scoreline that we had uh, in Carson down the coast on Friday so the USA going to uh, extend their unbeaten record to 21 matches here and keep their record of never having lost a match in California. Oh, there might be another one here for Lloyd. She's got Morgan arriving. Wants the goal herself and scores the goal herself. Two for Carly Lloyd, four for the USA. And that has delighted the fans here in San Jose. Rolling back the years, Carly Lloyd. This is all Carly. She starts it by just anticipating that ball. She has Alex Morgan on her left and says, no thanks. I'm gonna take it myself and why not when you can finish it like that. Morgan there with just that slip ball you thought she was gonna play. Having not used Alex Morgan, she had to score, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah, but she did yeah, score. I think she's looked sharp in these two games. Yeah. Because if you don't put that one, away, that one away, that's when you turn to, to Alex Morgan and go, my bad, sister. A four-goal triumph then for the USA. Chile couldn't keep it to three again. There's one quality this US team do have. They've been pretty relentless. There's no question of just easing off and uh, taking it easy that is it there won't be any more than four but it's a comprehensive win with Carly Lloyd the second half substitute grabbing two of them and probably grabbing that headlines Tobin Heath played her part certainly as well with some clever play and the United States continue on what is becoming quite a relentless run now they haven't lost since July 2017 when Australia beat them at last year's tournament of nations USA for Chile nil in San Jose and uh, we'll be back in a moment and we'll try to grab a word maybe with Carly Lloyd uh, to talk about her two goals certainly enjoyed tonight see you in a moment don't forget next Tuesday the 11th USA v Mexico men's game always a big one that one 9 10 Eastern on Tuesday from national coverage beginning at 8 30 a little bit before that so lots to discuss as well on new look US team these days who did draw 1-1 with France just before the World Cup final score here just to remind you the United States have beaten Chile by four goals to nil two for Carly Lloyd one for Mallory Pugh another one for Tobin Heath who was uh, at our most creative as well tonight and don't forget the US have drawn Mexico, Trinidad and Tobago and Panama in the qualifying section. Coming up next it's going to be Sports Center with Kenny Main and John Anderson.
from Julie Fowdy, who's getting better all the time, and me and Doug. <laughs> Goodbye from San Jose. We'll see you soon.